pieces together so they all fit in the cracked egg. This puzzle is very difficult, even though it looks uh, simple to do. People sometimes will spend hours uh, solving this, but we are going to get to the solution uh, very quickly here. Uh, this is what's called a packing puzzle, where you have the extra piece here. You need to pack it into uh, the space, and we are going to figure out uh, how to do it now. I've done a couple of uh, packing puzzles so far, so I've gotten to be uh, pretty good at them. There's different secrets you look for. Uh, you want to use the edges the best way possible. So if we were looking at this piece, we would not want to put this piece there. We'd probably want to put it against the edge there. Let me get this out of the way. We want to put it there so we can use up the most space possible. Also, we look to combine the pieces in ways that take up the least amount of space possible. So I might not uh, want to do this one here. I might not want to do that there, unless there was some other piece that was going to go in and fill up uh, that gap. Now, one good solution with puzzles like these, one, one good thing is to do it outside of the puzzle, and then you can put it in especially when this, uh, this cracked egg puzzle is not uh, symmetrical. Well, symmetrical, but it's not square. So this wouldn't be a puzzle that a computer would solve. You have to think through uh, this puzzle. Now, let's see. We look for different ways to combine the pieces where there's no gaps between them. So if we do this here, then we can put this here, or we can put it here. And you just need to keep track of this shape here in your mind and imagine where it's going to go. So if you do this here, we can already see this is gonna be wrong. It doesn't matter at the top. There's just too much dead space at the bottom of the puzzle. We wanna fill in all the dead space. Even that might be too much. So you look to find something that can go right up to the end. Like a piece like that, the W can go up to the end there because there's not uh, that many pieces there. I'd say that's too much at the edge. This is a really good edge piece. Uh, so I think that might be the solution. And then when you use these techniques, you'll be able to solve this puzzle much faster than someone who doesn't know any of the techniques. So look right there. Uh, so here what we've done, and I'm not, I'm not positive that this is correct, but I bet it is, because we've gotten so little extra space there. And of course the solution is going to be something with the littlest space between puzzle pieces and the edge. So next, uh, we'll place this one next, because this is the, uh, the biggest of the pieces here. Uh, yeah, so maybe it could be something where this will go here. Let's see, I bet this piece will go in, but I don't think the, uh, the other one will. But you can see we're getting much closer to it here. We're just a little bit off there. So let's see if we can use this framework of the, uh, as a T between the two Zs here. Hmm. What else can we do to fill in the rest of the space? So if we have a little more space there, then this would be a solution. It's it's overlapping a little bit, so we're not quite there, but I think we're getting close. Let's see, maybe I'll try it. Yeah, that would be the only way there. The good thing about this is it's smaller, it gets bigger, but we want something in the corner that's like that. It starts a little bit smaller and gets bigger as it branches out. So here, uh, if we can fit this in, yeah, but I can see that's not a good start. That's too much dead space down there. So that, that lets us know that these two pieces do not go together. And whenever you can eliminate piece combinations, you get closer and closer to the solution. So here, that's too much dead space there. I think that's even too much dead space for a sign. But something like that, that's irregular, but it really pushes right to the edge almost. So I think we might find a solution in there. Find something that hooks around in here. No, that would, okay. Look at that, it's pretty good. Uh, now it comes down to this piece. This is always the trickiest to place. And usually with puzzle solving, you'd look for something like this, like you're playing Tetris. But with these irregular puzzles, I've seen stuff where the solution is that, 
where you have some pieces all lined up and some piece in a weird position. It looks like that's not it. But whenever you see these irregular puzzles, you think about that. I keep thinking about this going against the edge somewhere. I think that's gonna be some solution because yeah, that we've created too many pockets of dead space. So we'll sort of put that to the end here. And now we just come up with the best way to place the rest of these. No. Now we're, we're doing this with the idea that that piece is gonna go in the side, but I want to leave us space for us to operate here. Let's see. No, none of these are good. So these two pieces will not be going together. Hmm. Now I think we have too much dead space there as well. Now that one's okay. All right, we look at that. Now we put that in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's see. That's so tricky because I can make the piece fit in that way, but I know this would need to be on that angle there and that's gonna yeah, even if we get that piece in, this is not gonna be right there. So let's think of different ways that these pieces could be combined. We've been trying to do it like Tetris pieces, but what if we put them all just sort of against the edge here? Sometimes when you think outside of the box on puzzles like this, you get to interesting solutions, right? So that's not the solution, but it does open up spaces in new ways that might get us thinking about something that becomes the solution. A lot of times these puzzles to solve them, the key is just reframing in your mind how you put a puzzle together. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Now, let me take this formation out. Okay, now this would need to be and there, and then, now it looks like we'll have a little extra space there. This. Now that's gonna be too much, although I do like this piece formation. Yeah, that fit in, fit in so right. But this one, even if we use that irregular placement, it's not quite there. Let's think, we're getting closer here with this. Hmm. This, this jagged piece, this is gonna be the hardest one. So if we can solve this, then I think we'll, we'll have it down. We just have to figure out where it's gonna go. All right, now that's interesting there. And the good thing here is we can put this, a piece like this in. Okay, so now, we filled up about half the puzzles with half the pieces, but there's not much space. So I like this as a solution. I think we're getting pretty close here and we are almost gonna get this here. We just have to figure out how to get these three pieces in and there's lots of space for them. It's not there yet, but I think this is gonna be correct. Let's see if we rotate this. No. Oh, yeah, that'll go in. Nope. But look at this. We're getting so close here. This piece goes in here. Oh, we're so close. We can also substitute this piece for this piece. Now look at that. Now we've really only taken up half of the puzzle. So if we can get these other puzzle pieces in, this is this is gonna be really good. So uh, let's see here. Put this here. Okay, look at this. Look at this. No, we're so close. Oh no, I thought that was it. Okay, I think this part of the puzzle is correct. I think we're dangerously close here. Maybe this is right and we just have to shift it. Let's see, is that it? No. Let's see, what else could this piece go? It could go this way. Maybe it's that way. That leaves us a little more space. All right. Mm-hmm. No. That goes there. Oh, yeah, 
Look at this. Come on. No. Oh, I thought, oh, yes, yes, okay, yes.